Well, if you run a Christian church and you decide to hold a Christian conference, let's say a conference for men, uh, it's probably a bad sign if anything at the conference makes headlines or trends on Twitter. And if something does make headlines and it does trend, you certainly don't want those headlines to be shocking and sort of hilarious in a morbid and cringy and depressing way. Uh, you don't want it to be the kind of thing that people see and, and they raise their eyebrows and say, wait, what? That's generally not the type of reaction you hope for. And yet that is the reaction that I had, and I think everyone else had, this week when video from the Stronger Men's Conference in Missouri started circulating on social media. The first tweet I saw was from Colin Rugg, and uh, here's what he posted. Quote, Pastor Mark Driscoll gets kicked off stage at a men's conference after he calls out Pastor John Lindell for allowing a demonstration from a male stripper. Now, you read that and you think that there must be more to the story. Uh, indeed, there is. It's just that the full context doesn't make it much better than it sounds. Here's USA Today with more. Quote, the Stronger Men's Conference, an annual event hosted by the James River Church, exists to inspire and equip men to live out God's vision for manhood to be the husbands, fathers, and leaders God has called them to be, according to a news release. It was held at the Great Southern Bank Arena on April 12th and 13th. Driscoll's remarks came following a performance from Alex Magala, a sword salt swallower who took off his shirt, climbed up a pole, and swallowed a sword live at the conference. Now, before we listen to Driscoll's rebuke, let's see a clip of the act in question. Keep in mind that this is a Christian conference for men, men specifically who are looking for guidance and inspiration to become better husbands and fathers. That's how they sell this thing. That's what they're there for. And this is how they apparently kick things off. Watch. So he, he swallows a sword and then he goes back up the pole. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty gay, let's be honest. Uh, and you notice like the older guys in the front row in ball caps and T-shirts, uh, the kinds of guys who, you know, they look like they enjoy nothing so much as cutting the lawn on a Saturday morning. And, and for good reason, just regular guys. And here is this Vegas sword swallower dramatically ripping off his shirt and climbing a stripper pole. And yes, this performer, Alex Magala, is apparently a former male stripper. Now, perhaps we can be generous enough to James River Church to assume that they didn't know that. And, you know, and yeah, I, I think they probably didn't, although it, it would mean that they aren't even Googling the people they pay to perform at their conferences. But let's assume that, that his full career resume was not known. No, let's assume that they failed to do even five minutes of due diligence. Fine. Even so, why would you think that a bunch of 55-year-old men at a Christian men's conference would want to see that? And the point still stands, even if you argue, as some have, that there was nothing sexual about the performance. Now, I think that interpretation stretches the bounds of credulity a bit too far. I mean, this is an actual former male stripper ripping his shirt off and performing on a pole. So he did strip and then perform on a pole. It's like, it, I, it's not difficult to connect the dots here. In fact, I say he's a former male stripper, but I'm not even sure that the former qualification is true or not. I don't know. But a Daily Mail article from 2016 when he was on Britain's Got Talent says this, quote, when he's not performing on the family-friendly talent show, the 26-year-old Soviet-born performer 
leads a more X-rated lifestyle, wooing all female audiences and gay nightclubbers. Astonishing photos show Magala, a college dropout, on stage as a pole dancing striptease artiste in Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Among his regular hangouts is the Abbey Gay Club in Hollywood, dubbed the best gay bar in the world. So, as of 2016, he was frequenting gay bars in Hollywood, not just frequenting, but performing at them. And now he's doing gigs for Christian men's conferences. Still on a pole and still shirtless. Now, whether he also still has his stripper side hustle going, I don't know. And it's irrelevant because, like, it's, again, connect the dots. When there's smoke, there's fire. And when there's a stripper taking a shirt off and performing on a pole, there's, well, there's something that doesn't belong at a Christian conference, at least. Grand Canyon University is a private Christian university located in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. GCU believes that our creator has endowed us with certain unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They believe in equal opportunities and that the American dream is driven by purpose. GCU equips you to serve others in ways that promote your flourishing, which will create a ripple effect of transformation for generations to come. Whether you're pursuing a bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree, Grand Canyon University's online, on-campus, and hybrid learning environments are designed to help you achieve your degree. GCU has over 330 academic programs as of September 2023. GCU will meet you where you are and provide a path to help you fulfill your unique academic, personal, and professional goals. Find your purpose today at Grand Canyon University, private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. That's gcu.edu. But even putting the stripper stuff entirely to the side, the question still remains. Why would you think that a bunch of middle-aged men at a men's conference would want to see that? What about that performance is supposed to speak to men, much less inspire them in their walk with Christ? Even if this was just normal acrobatics, right? Let's just pretend that it was. I've never met a middle-aged man who has any real interest in acrobats. And I certainly haven't met a man who goes to a Christian conference in hopes of witnessing an acrobat, especially not one of the shirtless and male variety. And that's apparently how Mark Driscoll felt about it. And uh, he said so once he got on stage, only to then be thrown off stage and suffer his own rebuke by Pastor John Lindell. Let's watch this uh, altercation unfold. Let me do this. Um, I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you, and my heart is very burdened for you. And I want to be very careful with this, and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. So, uh, so John Lindell throws Matthew 18 at Driscoll, saying that he should have spoken to him privately. And in many circumstances, I would agree. I mean, I believe strongly in addressing things privately rather than publicly whenever possible. But in this case, when you're speaking at a public event, 
and you strongly object to something that was done or said at that same event before you get on stage, it becomes necessary to address it publicly. If you don't want to be called out publicly at a Christian conference, don't invite male strippers to perform. It's, a, it's like a pretty simple equation. And if I had been invited to speak at that event, and I found out that my opening act was the dude dancing on a pole, I would have done exactly, exactly as Mark Driscoll did. Because if I did anything else, if I didn't say anything, it would seem like I was a willing party to this spectacle. Now, it's clear that Driscoll is in the right. Lindell is a, you know, desperately in the wrong. And everyone involved in hiring the former male stripper, or perhaps not so former, I don't know, uh, should be fired or, or, or should resign. I mean, that much is obvious to any thinking person. But what might be less obvious is the why here. Why would they do this? Like, how is this mistake made? Assume, assuming again that it was a mistake. Assuming that they didn't actually intend to hire a stripper, which, which I still think is a safe assumption, though perhaps I'm giving too much grace to them with my interpretation. Yet assuming it was a mistake, how was that mistake made? How did James River Church end up in this situation? Well, it's not, it's not really hard to see how. Because you go back to that video of Driscoll and Lindell. You notice the decor in the background of the arena. The, the backdrop for the stage is a giant picture of a motorcycle. Why is there a 50-foot motorcycle picture up on the stage? What does that have to do with inspiring Christian men to be better fathers and husbands? Now, there's obviously nothing morally objectionable about a picture of a motorcycle, but it does seem sort of random and ridiculous. Speaking of which, consider this video from last year's uh, Stronger Men's Conference, because they've been doing this for, I don't know how many years, several years. And um, at last year's event, there were no strippers, as far as I know. But they did have this. Watch. Okay, um, just to review what we watched or describe it for the audio listeners deprived of that, uh, deprived of, of, of the visuals there. Um, that was a guy in a tank shooting fake guns in the air while riding over a bunch of cars as fire shot out of the ground and an 80s hair metal band played a song from the Top Gun soundtrack. The only thing they were missing was Chuck Norris chugging light beer while barbecuing steaks over a gas grill and they would have crammed all of the corniest male cliches into one performance. That was like, it was a parody of the modern church's outreach to men. If Luke Wilson's character in Idiocracy has, had visited a mega church in that movie, the scene would have looked exactly like that. You, you could take that in its entirety and drop it right into that movie, and you wouldn't need to change anything. It, it's so lame and cringy that it's funny. And then it dives deeper into the lameness and cringiness and it stops being funny. But then it goes deeper still and it's funny again. Just not in any way that the church would have intended. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? Um, I think tanks are cool. You know, I, I, tanks are cool. I like fire as much as the next guy. Um, I like to watch really big vehicles drive over smaller vehicles. I don't like 80s rock all that much, but I, I understand the appeal there's nothing inherently wrong with any of that stuff individually or even altogether. But when a church is spending many, many, many thousands of dollars to put on a display like that, and they're doing it, they claim, to inspire men to be better Christian leaders in their families and communities, we must ask, 
how exactly this helps in that goal. Like, what, what is this supposed to achieve? Is it conceivable that any man will leave that conference and say to himself, wow, you know, I was feeling kind of spiritually dull and like I was failing as a man and a father. And then I saw that guy drive that tank over those cars while the Top Gun soundtrack played. And now I see everything clearly again. My faith is restored. I was blind, but now I see. I'm ready to be a leader. It's very hard to imagine such a scenario. At the very least, it would have to be a very specific and very strange crisis of faith if it can be cured by tanks and pyrotechnics. But the vast majority of men will gain nothing from that whatsoever. And some will go home feeling sort of embarrassed and condescended to. There's nothing spiritually invigorating about this. There's nothing actually inspiring. There's nothing to help a man gain wisdom or strength. It's, it's just frivolous and ridiculous and like corny. And, and that's the case even before the male stripper takes the stage. Now, um, here's one thing that, that I can assure the organizers of the Stronger Men's Conference and any future Christian men's, men's events. And there are many of these kinds of events that happen all the time. And, um, and they're very, very common. Um, men in this culture are not in need of more mindless, dumb distraction. We don't need loud noises and flashing lights and, and you know, sounds and random crap happening for no apparent reason. That's the culture we live in every day of our lives. This is every day. It's just that. It's just nonsense and noise and everything. Things are happening and people are shouting. And that's all the time. We can get that anywhere. And if we do want to see a demolition derby with a tank, and I'm not saying that we don't want to see that on occasion, but we can find it on YouTube whenever we want, I assume. So if you want to give men inspiration, if you want to help them, if you want to deliver spiritual enrichment and edification, give them something distinct from what they're surrounded by every day in this loud, dumb, obnoxious, demoralizing culture. Give them beauty. Give them wisdom. Give them something solemn and mystical and dignified and real and true. That's what the church should be there to provide. Not, not pyrotechnics and tanks. And certainly not male strippers. And that is why the Stronger Men's Conference is today canceled. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.